from this to this. I and here I am in my studio first thing in the morning I have barely had enough coffee I did my workout and now it's time to really get to work I've had a busy week teaching shipping artwork and uh, going to the big box store and stocking up on groceries so time to knuckle down and do what I'm supposed to do and paint so let's go over and see what's on the easel today all right I am in place I'm sitting which is a lot to be said for me because I'm constantly moving around I'm doing something so it's really hard for me to focus when I'm working so I have to have a project to work on and I have to be motivated and I've got a rather large one going right now but I have the most important tools that I need to keep me going which is a <laughs> sorry a very large glass of green tea pomegranate flavor is the only thing I want to drink and also I also made sure I had all my paints out for uh, this session and it's the same basic palette I always use. And what I've got behind me is a large sheet of paper. It's a 15 inches high and 22 inches wide. I had to think about that. And uh, it's pre-sketched and I don't want to show you the sketch, not that it's any good, but you really can't see it. It kind of washes out with the light. And I'll be working from a study that I did a 9 by 12 two photographs, why not make it difficult on myself, uh, and an iPad so I can see the different details. So let's go ahead and get started on this painting. This one's going to take a bit more time than usual because of the size. And here we go. I don't know if you can see this sketch um, because I try to do my sketches very lightly in pencil on watercolor paper. Uh, and um, I've just basically sketched out in more detail than usual the scene that I want to work with. And let me pull out a little bit more for you. And go down here, you see numbers ones, twos. Oh, there's a three somewhere. There's a three. And those are my lightest, darkest, and midtone values one being the lightest, two being the medium, three being the darkest. This is my Try to keep my camera work steady here. My original photograph, which I have on the iPad, which I kind of go by, but I get a little creative with the colors as I move on. And I've got my watercolor study, uh, nine by 12. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in all my paper, I have a pencil sketch of this. Let's see if I can find that and pop that on the screen for you. There's the photograph again. I don't know why I keep that there. I think it's sort of a comfort zone for me. And I'm using some of the trees that I took in this photograph in this particular piece. I haven't started painting yet. I had to really think about which brushes I was going to use. Huh, there's my green tea. And let me see if I can get all these brushes for you. I'm going to start out small. They always tell you, use your largest brush. And I found that causes me more grief uh, than helps when I paint with watercolor. I like to start out smaller unless I'm using a big space. And I've got a lot of detail on this one. So I'm going to start with like a number six, maybe a number two, a couple of quarter inch and half inch flats and see where we go from there. I've got my bundle O brushes. These are not all of them. I've got some that I take when I teach. I've got my paper towel and tissues, which I'm constantly hanging on to that tissue, not just for my runny sinuses, but also because I'm lifting and changing as I move along. Color palette, um, probably ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, oriolan, sap green, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson mixed down to some colors we'll see how it goes i change as i go along and my of course water one for clean one for dirty and a sponge and i dab my paintbrush sometimes with water and sometimes with paint i don't like very drippy things i find that i have more control if i keep it semi-dry and let me pull back here sorry if the camera works shaky I work on a drafting board I do not work flat uh, and because my colors don't drip that much 
I like the feel of the drafting board. I like to be sitting upright and to have all my sources ready to go. So that's where we are at this stage. And we're gonna start painting. See what's on my palette? Drops of water. This is watercolor. I have to keep reminding my students that watercolor does not work unless you use water. And I see a lot of the students letting their uh, palettes get dry, their brushes get dry. Uh, one suggestion I have is always make sure you have enough paint in your wells. Don't be too stingy. I am very stingy with my paint. It has been an issue and my former teachers and now my colleagues always say you haven't used enough paint, which I probably haven't. So I have to remind myself to keep enough paint. See that yellow, that aureola, and that's starting to look a little dry. Looks like I need a little paint in there. Uh, and I try to keep my paint moist. I keep my brushes moist. I have hay, water next to me, and I have a little spray bottle, or it could be a large spray bottle, where I'm constantly uh, moistening. That's a hard word to say. My palette, my paints, I keep my brushes wet, so that's a little uh, extra thing I wanted to throw in uh, that I'm doing right before I start painting. All right, I started laying in some of the washes, and these are really, really light on this piece. i trying to not work uh, my color so heavy in the beginning, starting lighter and building up the watercolor. Uh, washes as I go along. The only thing I wanted to keep really dark is this area of shadow underneath the bridge. So that's where I am at this point. A little bit of color on the background there on the trees. Not too much again. And the next step I think I'm going to do is start working over here on some of this greenery. And again, these are all initial washes and we're trying not to overwork the color. It looks very, very washed out right now, uh, but we'll darken with additional layers of layers. I huh, can't talk. Layers of color. I have absolutely no outdoor light today and I'll pan over and show you. Now I moved to, uh, they're building a house across the street. That's the blue porta potty. Uh, I moved from Florida to North Georgia, very beautiful countryside. Uh, unfortunately, winter happens here. I did not expect this much winter, so the light I have in my studio is very limited compared to what I have before. But I will do my best to show you how this is progressing. I added some darks there. I started filling in more greens, and again, I'm going very light because I'm going to be building on this. There are rocks, and I actually marked it off and wrote rocks where I want the rocks, which seems simplistic, but it works for me. So I started putting some light grays in, and again, keeping it very light. i put a little bit down here. So that's where we are at this point. I'm taking my time with it, and I'm hoping one day the sun will come out and we'll add some extra light to this. I was in a hurry to get started this morning, so I forgot my mascara, but I don't think my painting will be hurt by that. I'm at a critical stage at this point, uh, and I'll go ahead and put some stills of this. I've laid in all my color, uh, all my light and some somewhat dark washes, and I want to go ahead and step back and evaluate now. Uh, sometimes when I do all these studies and you can see all this around me, I get overwhelmed and I just kind of let my instincts take over. This is a fairly large piece, so I have to rely a lot on my instincts and what I did beforehand, what remains in here and what my memory holds. And sometimes you just have to let it go and paint. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll show you uh, some stills of how it's been going all along and how the washes are working out. And again, these are initial washes and they will be uh, increased, built upon, removed as the painting continues. All right, here we are. Welcome to the studio. I taught yesterday, so I'm a little tired today. So I decided I'm just gonna work on small pieces of this painting, small spaces. Uh, I've laid down the initial washes. 
looking at my study, uh, I want to leave this part alone for now and I want to play around a little bit over here. I, when I work, I mark where I want to leave the whites with a W in pencil. It's really sophomoric. <laughs> it's kind of simple, but for me it works. The only thing is you have to have your gummed eraser ready. Hi. Your gummed eraser ready to erase the W's before you paint over them. And that's the same thing with pencil lines if you want to do something like that. Um, I want to tiptoe easily and slowly into putting some shadows in here. And I want to do some washes. And I've got a tissue and I've got a paintbrush and a, an eraser. I'm, I'm multitasking here. I wet the paper a little bit. I, just, I should say I moistened it. I, I don't like the term wet the paper uh, because people tend to over soak it. And I'm throwing a mixture here of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and then I'm dotting in just a little bit of burnt sienna. And I wet the brush, cleaned the brush off a little bit and I just kind of manipulated it. Same thing over here, I moistened not wet, moistened the paper. If it's too wet, you're gonna have a mess. You're gonna have lighter colors. Remember, watercolor is water-based. And the more water you use, the lighter the colors are. The less water you use, the darker the colors are. So I'm gonna play around with this. My goal is not to use the same colors over and over again to uh, put in varied washes, maybe throw, oh, you know, let's throw, hmm, let's put a little bit of green here. I'm coming dangerously close to where that, there's a little W over here. <laughs> Very little pencil W. And the reason I'm putting green in, I like the variety, number one. Number two, there's green all around and it's reflecting in those colors. So these are rocks on the side of this painting and I'm going to have to do a lot of manipulation and adding washes here and there as we go along. But I'm trying to concentrate on small areas today. When you're a little tired, it's always good to focus on little things that you can manage without feeling like you're overextending yourself. Now I'm also doing here, if you can see, so I don't know if you can. Yeah, I think you can. Um, I'm doing some wet on dry washes, and then I take a damp, clean brush and I manipulate it, but not too much. I don't want to do too much green in here. I'd rather have some blue. And that's where I am at this point with this. If I get a little tired of doing this, and I'm at this point, I'm not also referring so much to my original, I'm looking at what is in front of me. You paint what you see, but also what you see here. Two different concepts that make a whole lot of sense. Uh, already, I'm looking at this here, and knowing watercolor dries 20% lighter than when you put it down, didn't like a whole lot of that. So I'm taking my brush, and it's a clean brush, just dampened with water, and I'm lifting that green. That's bothering my eye. I can always add some green there later. And I would prefer to go in and redo some of these darks. So as you're working on something, especially this big, take it slowly, take it step by step, tiptoe into it. Uh, you really need to focus and concentrate when you're painting something like this. Uh, I might work here a little bit on these darks here, uh, take some time and build on these darks here. I'm keeping these whites, here and here, little W's. You probably can't see them, but they're teeny pencil W's that will be erased. So uh, that's where I am at this point, and uh, we'll continue and see how it goes. I started working on some of the water. Uh, kind of left these rocks alone for now. Uh, got tired of doing those. And started adding more ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and green here and there. I, I wanted to do a path of that blue, almost an S-curve. I don't know if you can see here, 
going this way and this way and this way and getting you out to that part. So I started slowly putting in washes there. I wet the paper quite a bit and just charge or soak the paper with color and I do it very carefully. I mix the blue, the ultramarine blue, the sap green, and the burnt sienna on the paper. Um, I try to keep it fairly moist, the paper, so it has a soft look to it. Later on, I can dry brush some of the ripples in the water. Here's my progress so far. Um, I kind of like it better today. I think what's bothering me is this upper half here. Uh, it's so light compared to this. I was focusing a lot on this. So I'm going to start working on these areas in here. Maybe bring that bridge out more. Uh, added some darks. I'm not following the uh, study 100% completely. As you paint, you'll find that things do evolve differently than maybe what you started with. And this is my messy, messy palette. A lot of purple, green, ultramarine blue, sap green, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna. And I haven't started using a lot of the lemon yellow or aureolin yet. And that's going to come in somewhere in here. But I'm thinking of keeping this area more cool greens. That's a shadow there, and I apologize for that, rather than bright yellow. Uh, I'll have to see how it evolves. I really like the darks that are over here. I started putting them in on this side and I felt it good to mimic them on this side also and add some of those elements from them over here. So we'll see how things progress as I work more on this upper third of the painting. I'm finding on this piece I can only pretty much do uh, three hours at a time of concentrated work and that involves usually just the mornings. I put in some uh, paint for this bridge uh, so I could have an idea of oh, where I'm going with the upper third of this painting. A um, little darker here than I would like it but I think that's going to eventually balance out if I add some darks over on this side. So it's, it's a slow process. It's a large piece. I haven't worked on anything this large in a number of years. So that's where we are at this point. Next step, I believe, is going to be working on these trees back here and the foliage and trying to keep it diffused so that the main focal point is probably, I'm thinking, going to be down here or up in this area. I'm starting to lay in some of the colors for the trees that are behind this bridge. This is the upper third of the painting. Uh, I was waiting till the end to do this because I'm still not exactly sure how I'm going to handle it. I want it to recede into the distance there, but in order for that to show, I will need to darken some of these trees that are in the foreground of this third of the painting. Not the foreground of the entire painting, but the foreground of the third of the painting. And I'm just using very light washes of burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, uh, a little purple mix with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue for the trees, and just very delicately putting in the trees. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build on these greens to balance things out, looking occasionally at my study to see how I handled darkening that so that my eye, let me pan slowly for you, so that my eye will travel from this dark area into this dark area and then hopefully up in here and just recede in the back. So that is where we are. I took a couple of days off. Sometimes it's not good to paint constantly and every day, especially when you're working on a larger project. It clears your head just to take a little bit of time off and reflect on what you're doing 
and not rush through it. By the way, I got some new lamps. Well, actually one lamp. For many years, I used this lamp over here. It's an Ot light, and I'll put the link from the Ot light people in the description so you can see what I'm referring to. It mimics daylight. Uh, it's a warm and cool bulbs, and, it, and it's lasted me, oh gosh, over 10 years, and I don't think I even have changed the bulb out. But living here, it tends to be very cloudy, and I don't have as much sunlight in my studio area. So I sprung and got a second one. So uh, now I feel like my lighting is more evened out uh, on my piece. I have a bit of hum when I'm recording, and I think I can uh, just adjust that. But uh, always make sure you have enough light when you're working. Don't guess. Uh, spend the money and get something decent that it will illuminate your work uh, if you don't have enough natural light to work with. Things are working out fairly good this morning. Uh, try to steady my camera work here for you. I darkened the tree over here on the far right. I threw some dappled shadows in there. I also darkened some of the greenery in the forest. And that worked out well. I was able to keep the atmospheric perspective uh, by um, decreasing some of the greens there and I also added more blue to the sky and I worked it in here and there in the greens to unify uh, the green and the blue sky. I added some greens there. Everything was going well until I decided to lift some green plant life here. Too many palm fronds. So my next challenge is to match the brownish red that I put in on this bridge. I don't think that's going to be a big deal because I can match the color and then throw some shadows in there to hide it if I don't like the way it looks. Sort of like up here on the study. So everybody shows you the good things that they do and very few people show you the bad thing. It's not a bad thing, it's just, let's call it a challenge. And I also, there's so much green, I'm not really happy with that. I try to do ribbon of dark values intertwining here and there in that forest, and I think I need to throw some more dark values in there. So that's where I am. There's my challenge, and there's the rest of it. And I'm happy to report I was able to cover up what I scraped off, and actually I like this better. It has more continuance for the bridge. I added some more darks on the forest back there. I'm not going to do any more with that because I'm and getting that itch that I'm overworking it. There's a little nudge in the back of your head that says stop. I need to add a few darks in there, but I'm very happy with how this worked out and I was able to cover up my lifting there. And I don't know, somebody's doing wheelies out in the driveway and they're apparently so excited about my painting. So that's where we are right now. Next thing, a little bit of green over here and some dry brushing. Well, I think it's done. How do I know it's done? I was brave enough to put my signature on there. Other than that, I looked at it for a couple of days and the only things that I tweaked and I questioned it is I lift some of the green or lifted some of the green here uh, so I had more light highlights showing the sunlight coming through that thick Florida or deep uh, undergrowth, overgrowth that you find in uh, forests and treed areas in the south. Uh, I also put some shadows here. I increased shadows here and there. I really, really, really didn't do very much because I felt at this point it was overkill to do more. Uh, what I am hoping comes through with this is as you look at the painting, your eye goes to this area with this rock and water, and then it will follow this path of water to the bridge and beyond. Um, hopefully that's how it looks. I sometimes will get really nervous painting something like this because I would like to put it in a juried exhibition and judges I know will pick on pretty much everything. So I hope some judges will look at this and go, overall, that's a good piece. 
so that's where we are, along with all my shaky camera work. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video has helped some of you uh, learn what the process of painting in a watercolor is. Uh, thanks for watching, and remember, just keep practicing.